be sure to subscribe to LangFocus and click the notification button. Hello everyone, welcome to the LangFocus channel and my name is Plaw. Today I want to look at a linguistic phenomenon that I find interesting. It's called metathesis. The word metathesis comes from the Greek word metathesis, meaning change of position or transposition. It refers to a situation in which adjacent sounds change position in a word. For example, in English we have ask, but you might have also heard ax in some dialects. You can see that the two consonants have switched places. Another example from English, we have the word asterisk, which refers to this little star looking symbol. Oh wait, not that one, this one. Some people pronounce it as asterix, another one. The prefix intro or intra is often pronounced like inter, for example, introduce is sometimes pronounced introduce. So you can see that the R sound and the vowel have become reversed. Another one. The prefix pre or pr is often pronounced like per. For example, prescription becomes prescription. We can see examples of metathesis, of side-by-side -side sound switching positions in many different languages. In what kinds of situations does this happen? Well, during the development of a language, there's sometimes a change. For example, the English word bird came from Old English brid. You can see that the R sound and the I sound became reversed. Also, the English word thrill came from the Middle English word thirlen. Again, the R and the vowel switched positions. Second, metathesis sometimes takes place in one of two sister languages as they develop. For example, there's Spanish Preguntar. and Portuguese Perguntar. which both mean to ask. And there's the Czech word Plukovnik. and the Polish word which both mean colonel, as in the military rank. And similarly, there's sometimes a change in certain dialects of a language, but not in others, or not in the standard language. This is like we saw in the example of ask versus ax. Ax is probably the most well-known example of metathesis, and it's often thought to be broken English or a mistake, but both ask and ax have been around for over a thousand years. There was Old English, askian, as well as axian, which originated through metathesis. Eventually, ask became the standard pronunciation, but ax is still common in various dialects, most famously in African American vernacular English, also known as Ebonics. But it's also used in some other dialects in the American South, as well as some dialects in England. You know, that city near Europe. Fourth, metathesis also sometimes takes place systematically within a language, in certain phonetic or grammatical contexts. One example comes from Hebrew. In Hebrew, most words are based on roots, consisting of usually three consonants in a specific order. Verbs are created by placing the roots into a series of templates that shape the meaning of the root. A typical example might be like this. The root is k t v The first template is the pa'al form, katav. That's the dictionary form of the verb to write. There are numerous other templates, but the key one is the hitpa'el template, hitkatev, meaning to correspond as in by written letters in the old days. The hitpa'el template often gives the root reflexive or reciprocal meaning, doing the action together with someone else. I'll get to the metathesis in just a second. This is background information for the Hebrew example. When the first consonant of a Hebrew root is an alveolar or postalveolar fricative, like a s, sh, or z, or tz sound, then the first consonant switches positions and comes before the t in the hitpa'el template. So for example, we have the root sh, m, sh, which means use, which in the Hitpa'el template becomes Hishtamesh, rather than Hitshamesh. So you can see that the T and the Sh have changed places. Metathesis can also involve the transposition of entire syllables. For example, in Japanese, we have the word Gomen, which is used to mean I'm sorry, but sometimes people say Mengo, which is a humorous way of saying sorry. So metathesis is sometimes done intentionally for humor, but why else does it take place? Well, it's often a momentary error. Sometimes people might get confused or nervous or they're thinking about two overlapping concepts at the same time, so they say the wrong thing. For example, maybe they intend to say gold card, but they say cold guard. Also, children sometimes make errors like this when they misperceive the sounds of a word or they have trouble reproducing them. A common example is paschetti instead of spaghetti. But metathesis is often in but metathesis is often enduring, with shifts in words or in sound combinations becoming a part of that dialect or language. This could happen because certain sound combinations are slightly more awkward to articulate than others, and people most naturally look for the path of least resistance. Also, it could be that people perceive slightly different sounds as variations of each other. For instance, vowels with different lengths or stress 
together with R or L sounds. So take the word pretty, which is pronounced as purdy in some dialects, and by lots of other people trying to be funny. If you say pretty slowly, pretty, between the P and the R, it sounds like there's a slight vowel sound there, like er. So maybe people came to perceive the beginning of the word pr and pr as close variations. And maybe when they say purdy, they are perceiving a slight schwa vowel after the R, like pr, pr -di. And that slight schwa is considered a variation of the i vowel. I'm speculating, of course, but if you break down the sounds, you can see where people might perceive some similarity where it's not immediately obvious to us. And there are probably other reasons for metathesis as well, like the influence of other languages through contact. Metathesis is a very common linguistic phenomenon. If you pay attention for it, if you keep your eyes and ears open for it, you'll probably see some examples of words that are pronounced somewhat differently from their written form due to metathesis. And if you enjoy examining related languages, you'll likely notice some examples of metathesis in cognate vocabulary. If you can think of any other examples of metathesis, or if you would like to ask a question, please leave them in the comments down below. Be sure to follow LangFocus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And once again, I would like to say thank you to all of my amazing Patreon supporters, especially these people right here on the screen for their monthly pledges. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.